Welcome to the Geographic Updates Partnership Software, GUPS, LUCA demonstration. Before we get started, I just wanted to mention that GUPS is based on an open source GIS program known as QGIS, and it's free and easy to use. GUPS is being used for all of the geographic programs, including LUCA, and has been created specifically to ease the processing and review process for users. Although any user can use the GUPS, we found that it's particularly useful for those governments that are about 300,000 addresses or less. Um, one of the big reasons why we're pushing this is because it is fully supported uh, by the Census Bureau, so if anybody has any problems along the way, they'll be able to call in and get their problems resolved without any kind of other knowledge. Additionally, it uh, standardizes the submission process and has extensive validation tools to prevent incorrect submissions by participants. When you first open the GUP software, you're going to be presented with this window right here. It's the map management window. What the map management window does is it allows you to uh, choose the program that you are working on. In our case, it's Fluca. And you also have the ability to later open a recent project so that you don't have to go through the entire uh, installation uh, setup process that we'll be going through right now. So after you select the Luca program, you'll be asked where your data is going to be. Now for participants, it'll be on the CD or DVD, but for the demonstration, we're going to use my computer. As I navigate to the data, I'll just remind everyone that this is non-Title 13, so there's no worries. Um, all testing data. Uh, because it's supposed to be Title 13, you're presented with a Title 13 window where you'll have to input your password that's provided by the census. After you click OK, the files begin to extract. As you can see, they would have been coming off of a disk. Uh, you're then presented with a window that allows you to choose which counties you want to view at this time. Uh, this particular entity is within one county, so if there's only one county uh, on the screen. However, if you have an entity that's in multiple counties, you'll be able to choose from any of the multiple counties or just one of them. As you click Open, GUPS begins to load in all the necessary data, all the layers, uh, the address list, the address count list, and all the symbology to make it easy and quick for the user so that they don't have to search and figure out how to set everything up for them. This is all taken care of by the GUPS software. After the data is loaded, you'll see that you uh, are presented with this this map window, which shows all of the necessary layers for completing your LUCA program. You will have the census address list on the bottom of the screen, and you'll also notice this user address list tab, which I will get to in a minute. You will also see the address count list that is on the right. And then at the top of the screen, you'll see all your GIS or standard GIS buttons. So this top toolbar up here is for all your standard GIS such as zoom and pan, um, deselecting items, saving. Uh, the second toolbar down here, this toolbar is all of the LUCA-specific tools needed to complete the LUCA review and submission. You have a show hide legend, which is for showing the toolbar on the side, so you can see which layers are active and inactive. Because LUCA needs a lot of screen space, we've decided to start it with a close but it can be open at any time. Uh, you also have a validation tool, which is the address review tool, which we'll be going over later. You have the export to zip, which is how a user is going to be able to create their submission. And you also have a couple of print buttons and the add imagery button. What I'd like to do is try to go over what a typical submission or what we would call, an, I guess, an A-plus partner 
somebody who's well prepared for the LUCA program and may have their own address list in a digital form. They may have already had all their addresses geocoded using our geocoder tool or service, and they probably started a review of their address counts by using our address count download tool. For somebody like that, their first step would probably be to go to this user address list tab and import their address list. When you import your address list, there's two ways to import. They must both be in CSV or text file. And then when you select the CSV file, you'll present this import options window. The import options window allows you to either map your import headers, in which case you can say that, you know, on my user address list, the state is put in in this column known as state FP, or the county is in county FP, and so on and so forth. By doing this, you can have a dynamic user address list that will allow you to edit the address list, save the address list, assign GeoIDs, uh, view your map spots if you have Latin long coordinates, and add directly to the census address list from the user address list. If your address list doesn't have all these all this information or isn't really going to work in that kind of manner, but you'd still like to be able to see it, you can use the view as a read-only reference table. If you select that, you will not be able to map any of the import headers, and the table that you are importing will import directly as it would show up in any other software. You'll be able to sort the columns, but you won't be able to edit or save or see any of the map spots. Uh, to get the full use of GUPS, it would be better to map the import headers, so I'm going to finish doing that. As you can see, the only two fields that are required are house number and street name. However, the more that you can map, the better, and the less that you will have to uh, potentially fix when you choose to add them directly to the census address list. Now you can see that I've mapped all these fields, and all I have to do is select the OK button, and the addresses are quickly imported into the user address list. Fortunately for me, they all have GeoIDs, which is great because what happens when they're imported is in the address count list, which has been updated for 2020, we have a local housing unit count and a local GQ count, as you can see here and here. So what happens is that when you load the census data, the original housing unit and current housing unit numbers will be populated for you. As soon as you add in the local housing unit, this will be populated for you. Then there is a sum done in the difference so that you can see where the biggest discrepancies are in housing units and group quarters between what the census has and what the local has. This is probably one of the easiest ways to start a review for a participant. If a participant imported addresses that have map spots but for whatever reason do not have a GeoID, that address will not be calculated in the count list. However, if that address is still located within their jurisdiction, they can simply highlight it, click the Assign GeoID button, and as you can see here, what GUPS will do is auto-populate the state, county, track, block, and GUID fields based on where that Latin long coordinate is on the map. This is a really neat feature, and it's going to be very helpful for the users uh, that don't have GUID in their data. It also happens extremely quickly, and then as you can see, you get an action code C because technically that 
address has been edited in some manner. When it comes to doing your review, as I said before, one of the easiest ways and probably the best way to start for somebody who is unsure of what they should be doing is to, after they've loaded their user address list, is to sort by difference in housing units or sort by difference in GQs. This is going to let you see where the biggest differences are between a local data and a census data. At this point, you can select one of these blocks which have a difference of 22 and 17 respectively, and it will zoom to that block. If you select the deselect tool, you can see that the black dots are the census address points and the blue triangles are the user address points. And you can see that there's clearly a bunch of user addresses that the census appears to not have. If after a little bit more research you find that the census list truly does not have these addresses, the easiest way to get them into the census address list is to click on the user address list tab, click on the selection tool in the user address list, highlight them on the map, and you can see they've all been selected, and just click the Add to Census List button. Now what's happening up here is this is being recalculated, and as you can see now these are zeroed out because the census list and the local list have the same amount of addresses in this block. And as you can see on the user address list, because they were moved, they all have an M action code. And in the census address list, all those addresses have been added, and they will all have an A action code. After you click Save, all the bolded will become uh, regular font to let you know that all the information has been saved to the table. If you'd no longer like to see both sets of data on top of each other like this, we've added a checkbox that will allow the user to no longer see all of their user addresses, but only see the addresses that haven't been moved to the census address list. Simply by checking this box off, you can now see that we still have the blue triangles for, set for user addresses that haven't been moved to the census list, but anything that has been moved to the census list no longer appears. Um, it's just a small, small piece that might help the user with determining what data is theirs and what is on the census list. If you've performed your review and you find that the census list is pretty much correct, however, there's something, some sort of error within the list itself in the address, there's two ways to go about editing that address. Because the address list is designed similar to a spreadsheet, you can simply double click in a cell, the cell highlights, and then you can edit the address as you need. When you click out of the cell, the edited cell will become bolded to let you know that you've edited it, and there will be an automatic C action code for change placed in the action column. If I decided I didn't need that or I made a mistake and I wanted to go back, I can simply hit the clear edits button, and what it will do is remove the edits that are in bold, and return you back to what was there before. If the other way to edit an address is to select the entire address row, select the edit button, and the address update pop-up window will appear in the right. This window allows you to see all of the address information in one tight little area for, so that you can edit or change or potentially add a map spot or move a map spot. Um, for this, we're just going to edit the street name and then we're going to add a map spot. So this will be back to New Road. And then to add a map spot, you just click the Add Map Spot button, click where you want to add this new map spot. You get a crosshair, you hit the OK button, 
And as you can see, as soon as you hit the add map spot, as soon as you hit on the map, the Latin long are populated for you, as well as the state, county, tract, and block are populated as well. You hit the OK button, and the address point is added, as well as all of these edits. Uh, you hit the Save button, and the changes have been saved. If you find that an, edit, or an address is not in your jurisdiction, you can simply highlight the address, select the Out of Jurisdiction button, and a J will be assigned to that address. Similarly, if you find that an address is non-residential or should not be in, in the address list at all, you can simply select the address, select the non-residential button or the delete button, and they will be populated with an N or D respectively. Again, just hit the Save button, and the edits will be saved. It's a good reminder to always, always, always use the Save button as often as you can. Additionally, for people with larger address lists, what you'll see in the census address list window is this little select button in the bottom. What this drop-down menu does is it allows you to filter either by certain fields, where that you want to find all the, all the addresses that have bluegrass road, like here, you'd be able to type that in using the column filter, or you can filter by block. So if I wanted to just see the addresses in this block, I hit the block filter. I then select this button at the top for the selection tool. I select the block, the block's highlighted. I select the search button back down here. And now the only addresses that are showing in my address list are the 28 out of the 805 that currently are in this block. And of course, we have a bunch with A's because we added so many from the user address list. If you needed to have more than one block, say you were comparing what's on one side of the street versus something on the other side of the street, which I imagine is extremely typical for users, you can do that as well using the same tool. Use the block filter, the selection tool, say we'll select this block, and this block, you use the control key, push that block. Now we've got two blocks selected. You hit the search button, and now we've got both of those blocks in this list. Of course, there's only one address in that one block right here. Lastly, and of course saving the best for last, is that with this version of GUPS, we have a ton of built-in validations for the address list. So let's say a person would like to edit an address in the census address list. But they incorrectly put in a zip code that only has four digits. The validations are, can be as simple as that. They will check to make sure that there's five digits in the zip and can get as complicated as checking to see that the lat long coordinate for this address is located within the block that it says it's in and make sure that the block and tract and block are valid for the person's jurisdiction. Now, I know that that sounds very complicated, but what that does is it helps prevent the user from submitting addresses that they shouldn't be submitting or submitting incorrect addresses. It makes our processing life a lot easier and straightforward. Now, if this is what I put in and there's clearly an error here, when I click the Save Edits button, validations are currently being run and you get a census error list. If I click on this address, which is the same address that's right here, and click Fix, and the address update window pops up, and it gives me exactly what's wrong with this address. Yes, again, in this case, the zip code needs to be five digits, and it's only four. So I can simply 
change that to five and select OK, and the address will no longer be in the error list, and the address gets saved to the address list. At this point, if I've completed my review, there's only two steps left before I can completely submit. The first step is to use this address review tool at the top of the screen, which again, performs all the validations that you'd see throughout the saving and editing process, but additionally checks for duplicates through the entire address list. Now for me, I know that this shouldn't have any errors because we didn't make a ton of changes, and again, as you see, there's not a lot of errors. From there, I can go to the export to zip button, which nice and neatly exports the entire submission, zips and encrypts it, and prepares it so that you can submit it through SWIM. Additionally, if there were some sort of validation error that occurred between doing the address review tool and the export to zip, another set of validations are run very quickly to make sure that that hasn't happened. When you select that button and your file uh, passes, you are presented with the contact information form. If you wish to update it, you can, but it's completely up to you. You select the OK button, and all your data has been zipped and encrypted and placed in this location. So you can select the Yes button to see where that is. And as you can see, you have two different files in here. The reason why is because you have this file, which is for your address returns. And in the event that you had made edits to the contact page or had made uh, linear feature road updates, they would be a shapefile that were zipped into this one. At this point, you can select both of these, or one or the other, and submit them through SWIM for your submission. And this concludes your GUPS demonstration.